let's practice some descriptive statistics. So first things first, we are just simply going to find the mean and the median and then make a comparison statement. So remember the mean. The mean is found by adding all of these beautiful numbers up and dividing by how many we have. So when we add those nine numbers together, we should, so we're finding the mean. We add them up and we get 1,655. We divide by nine. And the average is roughly 183.89. Now you might have rounded that a little bit differently, but that's basically the mean. Okay, then we go to find the median. And remember the median is the number in order, least to greatest, and we go to the middle. So if I, you know, chalk up, and I'm just cutting off a, a big and a small, 186 is in the middle. And therefore, a comparison statement. Um, I would say something like maybe the mean is 2.11 minutes, because we are talking about minutes of time in, in any 500, slower, because we're talking time, than the median. And that would be a com uh, comparison statement. Number two, if the smallest winning time were changed to a smaller number. Okay, so let's just go back to this real quick. We go to here and we say, okay, what if this number, 160, what if that was changed to be 140? Okay, let's just pretend that. So if the last number, um, would the median change? Well, think about that. If I change this to 140, does it change this number? No, the median would still stay in the middle, which means the smallest number would have no effect on it at all. But would the mean change? Well, yeah, because when I add these together, this number would change. So because the number got smaller, the mean would go down because you're dealing with, you would have a smaller number divided by nine, which would make this smaller. So when you change a value on a, a either end, right, in this case it's the smallest number, um, it doesn't affect the median in the middle, but it does affect the mean. All right, so let's go ahead and consider the following set of wait times. The first thing you should notice is these are not in order, least to greatest. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to put them in order, at least before I do anything else. Put them in order, least to greatest. When I need to, to renumber them, I like to put them directly under a previous number because then I know if I have all the numbers covered, I didn't miss any, right? Because if you miss one number, it throws everything off. All right, so if we're going to find the mean, the first thing we do is we add them all together. So if I add all 10 numbers together, I get 68. I divide by 10 because there are 10 numbers here for the wait times at a restaurant. And that gives me a mean or an average of 6.8. The median is the number in the middle. Now, there are 10 numbers here, so five above, five below means there are two numbers in the middle. Well, if we take 14 and divide by two, I got 14 by taking seven plus seven, I still just get seven because on each side there's a seven. So my median is a seven. And the mode, well, the number is the number that appears most often. Seven appears three times, so seven is the mode. And the last one on this page. Consider the ages of Ivy Tech students in this graph. Are they skewed left or skewed right? We'll look at the tail. They are skewed to the right because it's tailing off to the right. So what would we expect to be greater, the mean or the median? Well, remember, if you can remember back to talking about this, we compared the mean and the median. If it was skewed right, that means the arrow pointed to the right. That means our inequality. So we would expect the mean to be greater than the median. That's an expectation. That doesn't mean it's always true, but we would expect the mean to be greater than the median because this would point the same direction as